Hey guys, Kev Muldoon here. What I want to do in this video is edit a video in Premiere Pro on my HP ZBook G3 in order to kind of highlight the performance. You know, I could have uh, done benchmarks and things like that. I'll maybe do that in a different video. But what I wanted to do in this video is do a comparison between my HP ZBook G3 and my 27-inch iMac. Now... I'm not doing this because I expect anyone with an iMac to upgrade to the HP ZBook, but I think it's relevant to some people who are on an older computer, you know, the kind of performance boost you can maybe get if you upgrade to a newer model. So, I've tried to do everything the same. I've got the same video being edited on both systems. I've imported the project to the, the HP ZBook. I'm trying to only keep the same applications open. So, um that will only have Premiere Pro and the media encoder and things like that open. The only thing that's really different um, is the, um, the recording application. I wanted to use Screencast-O-Matic for both devices. Um, and you can see that here, if I bring this up here. So I wanted to do that. I wanted to do that for both of them. But by default, Screencast-O-Matic doesn't record computer audio on the Mac. So I'm just going to use ScreenFlow. Um, but apart from that, everything is the same. I'm going to use the same microphone that I'm using just now. I'll use that on both. I'll use the built-in uh, webcam on both um, on both systems as well. So the webcam will be a little different, but you know I think it just makes more sense to use the built-in webcam rather than using my Logitech one. So before I go on, let's look at what we're dealing with here. Um, okay, I'm going to close Chrome in a second, but I just wanted to show you something first. This is a 2009 27-inch iMac, and you can see the processor here. This processor is a 2.66 gigahertz Intel Core i5. It's the i5-750, and if I jump over to Google Chrome, um, which I had there, there it's here, um, you can see there, it, it released quarter 309, and it is a quad core, but it doesn't have hyper-threading, so that was one of the mistakes I made when I bought this system. Remember when I was in the, the store, you know, I wasn't doing video work at the time and I, I, I was going to get upgrade to the i7 and then I decided against it, which was a mistake. Um, but you can see it's got four cores there and that's some of the other stats there. Now, other things here, I've got 20 gigabytes of RAM, I've got 7,200 RPM hard, uh, hard drive and the graphics card is an ATI Radeon HD 4850 with 512 megabytes. So... Um, what I'm going to show is a video. This was a, a video I did about um, Sony PSP Go, and you can see skipping around, no problem. It's got a 333 megahertz processor, stereo speakers, Bluetooth 2.0, also featured Skype. So there's not there's not any uh, jumping around of that. I have found that with the iMac, when I've been using this system, I don't get too. Um, it feels really good. Playback doesn't stutter too much. It's only really when, you know, I've got a lot of applications open and when I've got a lot of things happening in the canvas. Now, I probably should have used a different video, one that was, um, you know, that had a lot of different um, layers on it. But this is quite a long video. It's 22 minutes long, just about. So I wanted to show, the, I think the most important thing is to show the media encoder. Going in and modifying the games and making game saves and all that kind so of you thing. You can see playback's fine, and um, you know that you're seeing this at a 1080p resolution. But I'm looking at this on a 27-inch screen, and it's you know it's large, it's easy to edit. So what I want to do now is just export this video, and I'll use it in the media encoder. It comes up, okay. So what I normally do is I put it to YouTube 1080p HD. So I'll do that. I'll just save it as that, and then I'll, in fact, where is that going? I'll just look, throw it the other just now. Okay, so I'm going to queue it now. So I'll bring my media encoder over. I've got a second screen for this. So what I want to do is just kind of see the estimated time. And I'll bring over this CPU monitor just to see how things are going to go on. Now the the you know obviously the time that it takes um, for a video to encode it is obviously dependent on the CPU that's been used. This was something I didn't know before when it, I went out and bought the Surface Pro four about three months ago and I'm selling it now. Um, well I've sold it actually, 
uh, ship today. And I didn't realize how important the CPU was. I thought the graphics card would be important, uh, would be more valid, more relevant. But it's actually the CPU that does a lot, uh, most of the work. And the Surface Pro 4 had a really good CPU, but it was dual core. And that's why this i5 quad core from 2009 handles you know, video better than a 2015-2016 chip. So we'll just quickly see here. Now, it's showing here, if you look down the bottom here, it's saying it elapsed. It's got a minute there. And remaining 5 hours, 33. But you can see this is jumping down quickly. Now, the only other applications I've got open just now as far as major applications, I've got things like Dropbox and that on my Mac, but there's 20 gigabytes of RAM, so none of that should be an issue. Um, as ScreenFlow... Premiere Pro and the Media Encoder. Now, look at look at the amount of RAM being used there. It's two and a half gigabytes of RAM being used. But again, I've got more than enough RAM. It's the CPU. And it's... You can see that it's up here, the threads. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about the total time this will be. You can see that it's dropping down. But it, it, it gives you a kind of idea. I imagine it's going to be about an hour and a half or an hour when it drops down going by what it's been like before so what i'm going to do now i'm going to move to my hp z book which is here and you can see i've got it all ready for you i've got the same video i'm going to do the same thing and you know i'll show you the stats and that and hopefully this will kind of illustrate the difference in, in what you'll get with the hp z book g3 if you're going to do video editing with the premiere pro CC. So I suspect this one is going to be about an hour once it's cut down. That's about right. Hopefully. So let's see how we got on with the HP ZBook G3. Hey guys, I'm now on my HP ZBook G3 and this is what I wanted to show you. I've been looking at the specifications, etc. I wanted to clarify some things for you. If you look at performance here you can see most of the stats here it's got an intel core i7 6820hq cpu it's 2.7 gigahertz but it can go up as you can see here it can go up over i think up to let me see this up to 3.6 so it's quite a jump the if you remember right the, the other one was clocked at 2.66 but the most important thing here is it's got four cores but with threading it can go up to eight so it's a much more powerful um cpu now, the memory, I've got 16 gigabyte of uh, DDR, I think it's 4 RAM, I think. And um, it can go up to 32 gigabytes. We've only got 16 just now. And I've got a 512 gigabyte SSD. Now, SSD does make a, a big difference in performance. So that is something to take into consideration as well. Um, now, you can see the, the current res resolution is 1080p. That I've just did that just for you know so that I can compare both devices easier. It's got Intel graphics 530 powering it just now, but I've also got a Quadro M1000M uh, graphics card in it. Now, this is why I, I was ready to record right away, but I spent a little bit of time looking into this because I was under the assumption that my laptop has a four gigabytes Quadro M1000M, and you can see there M1000M there. But I've actually I looked about there and there's actually two versions. There's there's a there's a version this one says that it's two gigabytes, but there is, I believe, a version of the M1000 with four gigabytes, I think. Um I'll need to clarify that, but I don't think the graphics card is going to be used in this test anyway, so that shouldn't be an issue. So if I just jump back here, I'll I'll switch off Internet Explorer just now. And I'll I'll switch off this as well. No. Right. Um, okay, so we've got the test. So there's no there's no stuttering or anything like that. Now you know, I really should have tried to find a video that that um really pushed the boat out as far as resources. But there's no problems there. Um as far as um, stuttering or playback. And that was one of the problems, again, that I had with my Surface Pro 4. When I was using it, you know, it was stuttering, it was playing, uh, when it was playing it back, so it was it was borderline useless. 
when you try to edit videos because it was such a pain, you know, it'd be stuttering and stuttering and you'd have to wait for it all to cache and things like that. And if you look at the resources here, you know, everything's okay. You know, I'm using seven gigabytes, but a lot of that is actually being used by the recorder. You can see 412 meg there. So what we'll do just now is encode, and this is the key thing here. I've, I've not actually encoded any videos on this yet. So it's going to be interesting to see how this performs. Now I'm hoping to was on HT. Um, I'm hoping to do a lot of video editing on this. So fingers crossed the performance is good. I mean it, it should be good, you know, we we're um we're, we've got a, a brand new well say brand new sixth generation um Intel CPU. Seventh ones, um, the ultra low voltage ones are out, but the the main ones aren't. So this is the fastest you're going to get. So we'll see where this comes up now. If you remember right, the other one was saying about two hours or something like that but then eventually went down and it was about an hour now again this is doing this is what this is what premier pro does you know at the start it says three hours or something and then it drops down quickly but if you you can see there, look how quick this is dropping down. It is absolutely rapid compared to my Mac. Now the other one was like two hours, but it was going down slowly and slowly. Uh, you know, after about 15, 20 minutes, it was down to 45 minutes on my Mac. So I think it was right with the calculation that it was going to be an hour. By the looks of it, you know, just taking a well stab at the dark, uh, in the dark, I think this is going to be about probably, I don't know actually, I mean, I think, this could be about 20 minutes, maybe. If you look at the speed, this is dropping. Maybe 20 minutes, maybe maybe a little bit more, maybe 25. But it looks like I'm going to get encoding processed about three times the speed. Now, this is a kind of, um, this is a live test. I mean, what I'd have to do perhaps in another video is to actually time them and stuff. But you can see just now how quickly that is dropping. This is elapsed time is not even two minutes yet and it's dropped down to 46 minutes i think it's going to end up being about 20 minutes or so so it, it looks like i'm going to get encoding times about three times as quick through the hp z book and you know from an editing point of view from a work point of view that's really good i'm going to get videos encoded much quicker if i actually do them through my uh, hp book hp uh, z book So I might have to rethink the whole way that I handle videos, the, way, the whole way that I've got my computer set up, you know. It's it's going to save me a huge amount of time. You can see the CPU, the encoder, is using up all the CPU there. So that's at 3.17 gigahertz just now. I actually thought the fans would be going crazy just now, but the fans are actually they're quite quite calm. They're not, I mean, it's not totally silent, silent, but I can't, I can't really hear it. I mean, it's much quieter than my Mac. I was expecting this to go a little bit crazy once it got to full CPU. Disk write speeds. It's writing, it was at five, six. So you can see after just over three minutes has dropped down to 35 minutes again. I mean, I think this could be 15, 20 minutes. So we're looking at about three times to four times the performance from um, this 6820 HQ CPU against the i5-750. Well, you've enjoyed this little comparison, guys. Um, I know some of you might have just wanted me to show you the video editing on the HP book alone, but I think it was interesting to kind of look at the difference in performance you're going to get from a chip from six years ago to now. And it's no brainer that something is going to be quicker. Of course, it's going to be quicker. It's newer. But I think 
you know, seeing that firsthand, you know, I've been using this iMac day in, day out for years. And to see encoding drop down by three or four times is really, really impressive. And, you know, this isn't the most powerful um, chip that's out there. There are, I think there's a few more that you can get a, a Exeon chips as well. But this is one of the best ones that's, that's out there. And, you know, it just kind of reinforces my belief that the HP ZBook G3 is an absolute beast. It's a powerhouse. It can do everything that you want. And I'm surprised more people aren't, you know, using it in the same breath as a MacBook Pro. I think one reason for that would be that the battery life is pretty poor. Um, if I take out my adapter there, can you see it? The screen goes dark. No, it's not coming up this the time. Um, I'll need to do some more battery tests, but in general, I think you'll probably be lucky to get two and a half, three hours out of this. That's not a problem for me. I mean, I don't really need to use it out of away from the AC adapter for long periods of time, but it is worth noting, and it's perhaps one of the reasons why a lot of people don't consider it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you get any questions about this, please do let me know, and I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you found this useful, or at the very least, found it interesting to see a comparison. Video editing on the on uh, Premiere Pro. The key thing is to buy a quad core that's got hyper threading up to eight cores. You know that I. I I saw this firsthand with my older laptops um, that were i5 processors. Well, my old Lenovo was i5, it was dual core. The Surface Pro was dual core. And they really, really struggled. You know, I mean, they can still do the job. The problem is encoding takes a long time and playback is stuttery. And you're not going to get that when you've got eight CPU cores compared to two. It really is night and day. So I really wish I knew, I knew that before, but, you know, you live and learn. Very happy with this. So again, if you've got any questions, please let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm not a, a, an expert on this, but I will do my best to uh, you know, share what I've learned so far. If you've enjoyed the video, please do consider liking or sharing and subscribing to my channel. I'm going to do some more videos about this in the future. And hopefully I'll be doing more tutorials and things like that through this laptop as well. So thanks for watching, guys. Till next time. Take care.